Welcome to Blueprint OT. In this video, we will compare the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Raspberry Pi Pico 2, also taking the Pico 1 Wi-Fi into consideration. So let's dive right into a side-by-side -side comparison. So the Pico 1 was Raspberry Pi's first microcontroller instead of the microcomputers they are normally doing. While there was only the plain Pico version at the beginning, they introduced later on the Pico 1 W or the Pico Wi-Fi, which had wireless connectivity on board. We will compare those two models to the new Pico 2, starting off with the most important thing, which is the price. The Pico 1 is currently sitting at 4 euros and 55 cents. The Pico 1 Wi-Fi sits at around 6.99, which is more than 50% extra just for the wireless connectivity. And the Pico 2 sitting at 4.99 euros or comparing to US dollars at $5. So I think in dollar, the official price is always five dollars for the two and five dollars for the one but obviously since the two is on the market pico one was discounted in our case to 4.55 i'm comparing prices in germany but obviously the deviation compared to each other will be similar no matter which currency or country so the pico one launched without any wi-fi while the pico one w launched with 2.4 gigahertz wi-fi and bluetooth on board the new pico 2 while being superior in many aspects, is launching without any Wi-Fi or Bluetooth on board. It is worth mentioning here that the Pico 1 and the Pico 1 Wi-Fi haven't been launched at the same time as well. So between the Pico 1 and the Pico 1 Wi-Fi, there was a gap of around 1.5 years, one and a half years roughly. So even though the Pico 2 is launching without Wi-Fi or Bluetooth, there is a quite high likelihood that they will launch a W version or Wi-Fi wireless version later on, including Bluetooth for Energy and wireless LAN. Moving on to the known things. All the bus systems and the interfaces are same for the Pico 1 and the Pico 2. So all of them support I2C, SPI and UART. In case those terms are familiar, but you don't really know what it's about, check out our video about I2C, SPI and UART. Similarly, the power supply is for all three models between 1.8 volts and 5.5 volts, which is quite a convenient range for basically all the common power supplies normally at 3.3 volts or 5 volts USB or 3.7 volts in case it's a lithium ion cell. Same goes for the logic level, which sits for all three models at 3.3 volts instead of the 5 volts known from Arduino. Those 3.3 volts fit conveniently with the same logic level of the Raspberry Pi 4, 5 or 3 or all the other microcomputer models. So no matter which sensors you have laying around, those can operate with the Pi Pico as well. The more significant changes are coming with the GPIO pins. While all the models have 26 GPIO pins, the Pico 1 was coming with three ADCs out of those 26 GPIOs and 16 of those 26 GPIOs have been PWM pins. So PWM is basically key for anything when you need to emulate a certain voltage level. In case you want to dig deeper into it and learn about UD cycle and so on, check out the video about PWM. The Pico 1 Wi-Fi has exactly the same setup with 26 GPIOs of which 3 are ADCs and 16 PWM. The Pico 2 has some significant changes. While 26 GPIOs in total stays the same, also the header layout itself is very similar. We have a difference with the ADCs. We have one additional ADC, which I think is really useful. If you're working with any analog sensors, it's super useful to have four ADCs. So you may get around connecting an external ADC. And even more important here, we have 24 PWM pins. While it is unlikely to use 24 PWM pins, it is convenient to have more of them because this means they are spread more evenly across the pinout, which makes it more easy to connect your peripherals to a pin that's convenient to you and not being bounded to a pin that's multipurpose. And unfortunately you used this PWM pin already for a motor that you now wanna use for any sort of sensor. So for me personally, pins, ADCs, PWM, those are the really interesting things if they're changing because that's something, it's small, but it's also something that you will experience every single time when you're trying to build something with a microcontroller or microcomputer. Last but not least, the things that really change and that getting advertised very much are mostly the clock speed, which is moving from 133 megahertz from the Pico 1 
to a rocking 150 megahertz of the Pico 2, even though the frequency might be not so important. The most important thing is that they changed the actual chipset. So while the Pico 1 was also running on a dual core ARM Cortex, the new one is running on a dual core ARM Cortex M33, which is providing you with the trust zone technology from ARM. So this basically allows you to separate into a secure and non-secure code execution. So for any type of application that maybe is safety or security relevant, like a smart lock or whatever, a smart thermostat or something like this, that's maybe not safety relevant, but at least critical for your infrastructure, this could provide you with a real benefit. As well as from an education point of view, I think it makes a lot of sense to introduce those type of approaches to increase cybersecurity into an educational platform so everybody can get hands-on experience. Another novelty is that you can basically choose in the setup between the ARM Cortex or alternatively working on two hazards three cores, which is basically giving you the opportunity to play around with RASIC V, which is basically an instruction set architecture, which is overall a very educational focused platform. So you can build very simple embedded applications, especially where you have any low power requirements that are outweighing the high performance or complex task type of thing. Moving on to RAM and flash, we actually have for the Pico 1, 264 kilobyte of SRAM and two megabyte of flash. In case you're wondering what's the difference between SRAM, flash and all the other types of RAM, make sure to check out our video specifically about the different types of RAM. The big novelty here for the Pico 2 is that we're actually basically doubling the SRAM to 520 kilobyte and four megabyte flash, which is basically double for the SRAM and the flash compared to the Pico 1. Something that I haven't seen so far in many articles is actually the operating temperature. While all models are starting at minus 20 degrees, the Pico 1 and Pico 1 Wi-Fi operate up to 70 degrees and the Pico 2 is operating up to 85 degrees Celsius, which from my American viewers is 185 degrees Fahrenheit. So those additional 15 degrees I think is something very valuable especially if you think about outdoor applications where your whole setup, including the microcontroller, is sitting in a housing that may be exposed to the sun and heats up a lot. Something that might or might not concern you is the EUP or end of production, which is 2036 for the Pico 1 and 2040 for the Pico 2. While it gets exaggerated by many people that the Pico 2 is supported until 2040, also the Pico 1 is supported until 2036, which is not such a big difference and both dates are far in the future. So I think from this perspective, Raspberry Pi is really supporting everybody in the long run, which is super cool. So that are all the differences that I think are important. Let me know in the comments if you think something else which should be added or would be interesting. Anyhow, make sure to be subscribed to not miss our upcoming videos about the power consumption. So we checked already on the Raspberry Pi 5, on the ESP32, ESP8266, and we are having upcoming videos about the Arduino Uno, the new model, and the Arduino Uno Wi-Fi, as well as the Raspberry Pi Pico 1 versus Raspberry Pi Pico 2, where we do a measurement setup and check the actual power consumption so you can size your power supply or battery system for your application to the right size using those boards. Thanks for watching and see you next time.